What you need to know about the book of Acts, it is, it is basically part two to the book of Luke. The book of Luke was the first, uh, was Luke's first letter to uh, Theophilus, uh, the gospel according to St. Luke. Um, you know, he had a friend, Theoph the uh, he had a friend named Theophilus. He's trying to bring it to the truth, trying to tell about Christ. And so that's where the book of Luke came from. The book of Acts is, you know, the second part to that. And I'll start here with Acts 101. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, right? That was the book of Luke until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So when Christ resurrected, people think Christ just resurrected, showed up, popped in, hey, what's up, I'm gone. No, when Christ resurrected, he was on the scene for 40 days, showing the people the scriptures, giving them understanding, all right? Saying, look, this is what I fulfill by doing this. Here's what I fulfill right here. Y'all remember when I did this? Well, here's how that's fulfilled in the scriptures. He was with them for 40 days, all right, giving them understanding, all right? And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So he told them, once he resurrected, because he resurrected in the middle of the Passover, he told him, look, stay in Jerusalem until you receive the spirit the same way that I have the spirit. Until, until you receive that promise from the father, until he gifts you the Holy Ghost. And we'll get into that. That's in the next chapter. All right. Verse uh, six. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they said, look, all that stuff that... Uh, all that stuff about the Messiah, that he's going to bring back the kingdom of the Lord to the Israelites? Are you going to do that right now? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. So he said, look, not right now. I ain't fulfilling that yet. There's a lot of things that still need to be fulfilled. All right. He said, that, that's up to the Father when he decides that. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You see that right there? So he said, look. Y'all ain't gonna get the kingdom right now, but y'all gonna receive power through the Holy Ghost, all right? And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So this ain't talking about a, uh, you know, a rain cloud. That's not what this is talking about. It's talking about a chariot, all right? What people call UFOs today. Back then, you ain't seen nothing bright in the sky unless it was the sun, or a, a cloud, right? That's the only thing that you saw in the, in, in the sky during the daytime. They said, well, we know it's not a bird, right? They didn't have planes back then, right? They, they didn't have a word called UFOs. They, they called it clouds. They called them stars. They called them a, a pillar of fire, a pillar of a cloud, all, all these different words for it, right? Chariots, all right? That's what, that's what uh, he was taken up with, or taken up in, I should say. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So this is two angels, all right? Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Meaning he's going to come back with them chariots, all right? And it says the same thing in Isaiah 66, all right? We, we've talked about that as far as uh, end time prophecy, the day of the Lord, Christ coming back. We, we've read that before on the Friday night lessons, but that's the same way that he, he uh, ascended, all right? Was, was with them chariots, was with that cloud, was with that cloud, excuse me. All right, verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey, all right? So um, they were all chilling at Mount Olivet whenever... Uh, that was one of the things that, that Christ liked to visit was, uh, you know, the Mount of Olives. Um, and that's, that's where they were chilling when he ascended. All right. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where they were abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. Right. So the 11. Right. That's all 11. And one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. 
Uh, these all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. You see that right there? So um, they, they were all close with Christ's family, all right? And obviously his family's mourning because they just saw, you know, Jesus being crucified, all right? And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the, the number of names together were about 120. You see that right there? So that's how many people were there, 120, all right? Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Right? Judas was the betrayer and murderer. Technically, he didn't murder, but, you know, he caused him to be murdered. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Right? So they're saying that, you know, uh, Judas fell, and, you know, he's a... Uh, he, he, he busted his head open, right? He had a head injury. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as that field is called in their proper tongue, Asadama, that is to say, the field of blood. Now, we'll go ahead and, and tell you straight up that in Matthew 27, it does give a different account as far as uh, Judah, Judas uh, hanging himself. Whether uh, that one took, you know, because obviously we know now that a, a lot of attempted suicides just go exactly as that attempted and they don't you know go all the way through it could be the same uh with judas he could have tried to hung himself and then went to this field and, and fell in the field um but both matthew and luke get the same account of you know a field being purchased with those you know 30 pieces of silver and that field being called al Sodama, which is the field of blood uh verse 20 for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And his bishop prick let another take. So I believe that is actually Psalm 69 being quoted. I could be off on that, but I believe that's what it is. Wherefore of these men which have a company with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Right. So it was more than just 12 disciples, but Christ chose 12 specifically to rule over the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. All right. You read about that in Matthew 19. All right beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So, so Peter's saying, look, 11 ain't even enough to rule the church. We need 12 bishops. We can't start with any less than 12 bishops. That's what he's saying here. All right. And they appointed to Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, right? So you have uh, Barsabas Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, right? So all of them rolled. It. Let, let's say like, uh, this is how we uh, would we'll do it today. Like, let's say like a dice, right? Let's say a six-sided dice. Everybody roll, all, all the 11 roll a six-sided dice. And we'll say like evens for uh, Barsabas Justice and uh, odds for Matthias. And then they'll count it up, see which one got the most even, see which one got the most odds. And, and the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. You see that right there. So uh, that's the things that they used to do back then. That's the things that like the Levite priests used to do. And as you see, the apostles did it as well, where it was, uh, they would take these things that, uh, you know, that you would call like probability or chance and since we know that the lord is in all things the lord does all things creates all things then you know that the lord has the power to uh manipulate that probability right it's all in his hands so that's why they were casting lots to see who uh you know rolling dice if you want to put it like that to see who would become the next apostle and it was uh matthias so uh matthias is counted amongst the 12 all right and acts 2 and starting with verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. So remember, Christ come back during the, uh, during the Passover, right? It was in the middle of the Passover when he come back. So after the Passover, you have 49 days. And the 50th day is the Pentecost. That's why it's called the 50th day, right? That's what Pentecost means, 50 days, right? So Christ was around for, you know, weeks and weeks, uh, more than a month. 
more than a month. It was around for 40 days, right? So it, they were approaching the Pentecost even at that time. Then they just had to wait another couple of weeks. Boom, here we, are at the, uh, here we are at the Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, each of them meaning each of the twelve, each of the apostles. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, right? So these are, you know, the apostles speaking in the Spirit of God, all right? Teaching the people about Christ. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven, because it was the Pentecost. And it's a law in Deuteronomy and in Exodus that says, Jerusalem, or the place where the Lord shall choose, which was Jerusalem, is where you would go for the Passover, the Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, everybody's there. All right, everybody's there in, in Jerusalem, right? Jews from every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. All right, you see it right there. So it's about to get into the specific language, but like, for example, we speak English. So like, say, for example, we were uh, traveling to Jerusalem to keep the Pentecost and we meet these Hebrews who only ever spoke Hebrew, now they're speaking in English. How's that possible, right? With the Spirit of God, all things are possible. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They said, look, these from Galilee. They're not even from uh, Jerusalem. They ain't come up in the, uh, the Pharisee schools. They haven't been taught how to speak all these languages. How are they speaking all these languages? And how here we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. So, that lets you know this ain't talking about, you know, they're, they're saying a whole bunch of nonsense, right? They're not speaking in the glossolalia. They're not, da -da 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 -da. like, that's, that's not what they're doing. They're speaking a different language, right? They're speaking in Hebrew, but the people hear them in a different language, all right? And they understand in that language, all right? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia, right? So you have uh, like Persian, we got them speaking Persian, or the people are hearing in Persian rather. Dwellers in Mesopotamia, you have your, you know, different Assyrian and Babylonian languages, right? And in Judea, that'd be the Hebrew, and Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia, they're all speaking Greek over in that region. All right, Phrygia, Pamphylia, so that's again Greek. In Egypt, they, they hear in it in Egyptian, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, other African languages, and strangers of Rome, so they're hearing it in Latin, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, they're hearing it in Arabic. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God, right? So it's just, they're up there speaking Hebrew, right? The people, the apostles of Christ are up there speaking in Hebrew, but teaching them about Christ, and the people can hear it. They're only speaking it once. They're not saying, hey, look, uh, they're not saying, like, for example, this is, in, in, this is speaking in tongues, right? How are you doing? Come on, styles, right? They're, it's not two different things. They're, they're saying, uh, how are you doing? But the people are hearing it in come on, styles. Like, it's, it's a miracle being done here, right? The people are speaking in one language, but the people are hearing it in all these different languages, all right? Um, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking, saying these men are full of new wine. Right? So how, how can you being drunk be able, to, uh, be able to affect this? You see what I'm saying? How can, how can someone being drunk be able to uh, speak in other languages? That's, 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 not, <laughs> that's not even possible. All right? But again, your, your doubters are going to find ways that, to doubt. You know what I mean? They're going to just find whatever excuse they uh, have to doubt. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. You see that right there? So it was like 9 a.m. They're like, we're not drunk. What are you talking about? It's 9 a.m. <laughs> but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. 
and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. You see that right there? So, so Peter's saying, look, we're fulfilling this prophecy because the Lord gave a spirit to us. And so now we're preaching to the people and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. So you see that right there? He said, look, the fulfilling of this prophecy is when people call on the name of Jesus, right? That's, that's what it's going into. It's going into people, uh, specifically ye men of Israel, as it says right here coming to Christ that Peter's like, look, this is how this prophecy is fulfilled is when we come to Christ. All right. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. You see that right there. So he's speaking to the religious leaders of the time, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees. He's saying, look, y'all the ones who murdered him. We trying to fulfill the scriptures and y'all trying to destroy the ones who bring it. All right. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that it should be holden of it. You see that right there? It was not possible because the wages of sin is death. All right? And Christ never sinned. So God said, look, there's no other way. He can't stay in the ground. He can't stay dead. All right? It's not possible. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will I suffer thy holy one to see corruption. And this is either Psalms 22 or Psalms 16. Both of those have uh, uh, messianic uh, implications. All right. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. All right. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto, unto this day, right? Because this is before all the, uh, all the Muslims came through and just destroyed all the, uh, uh, what would they call, what would they call, sepulchers, all right? That's what uh, Israelites used to bury their dead in, sepulchers, all right? And when we uh, were reading about David in Bible history, we read about when he died, he was put in a sepulcher, right? So, um... But, uh, you know, since then, the Arabs have come through and just destroyed all the bones, all the remains of the Israelites. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, see, he seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, meaning the grave. Christ's soul was not left in the grave. Neither his flesh did see corruption, right? Because Christ come back in his body, all right? That's what he told, and we read that last week, where he told uh, the sisters, hey, look, don't touch me because, look, I ain't ascended to the Father. I'm still banged up, right? I'm, I haven't put on that spiritual thing yet. I'm still in the flesh body. That's why I, Thomas, he showed Thomas, he said, look, my hands, look at my ribs, how they, you know, how they cut me up. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. You see that right there? And, and you read in 1 Corinthians 15, there were more than 500 people that saw Christ. We just read in, in earlier uh, in Luke, 1, I mean, in Acts 1, that he was there for 40 days. All right? Many people saw him. All right? He said, we are all witnesses. Therefore, by being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which he now seeing here, right? So, so Peter's saying, look, I get it now. I get what Christ is talking about, about us receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. That, that's being fulfilled right here. He uh, baptized his apostles here with the Holy Ghost, all right? For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool, all right? So as uh, Peter was saying, look, David didn't ascend into the heavens. We still got his body over here in the sepulcher. It was Christ. He was talking about Christ ascending into the heavens. And that's, that's Psalms 110. I do know that. That's Psalms 110 that he's quoting right there. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Right? 
uh, both Lord and the anointed. That's what Christ means, the anointed. All right. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So now they're feeling convicted. They said, oh, we did kill the Messiah, huh? That's what we did. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You see that right there? So he said, it's not only to you, but it's to those who've been scattered as well. It's to Israelites scattered. All right. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You see that right there? So that lets you know that there was more than 3,000 people there at the Pentecost, but 3,000 repented right then at the Pentecost. This is, this is a couple weeks after Christ ascended. 3,000. 3,000 already following. Not to mention the 120 that it already mentioned. All right? Verse 42, uh, yeah, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. You see it right there? So they had the power of the Holy Ghost. They were able to do miracles, all right? And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions in good and parted them to all men as every man had need. You see that right there? So it's important there. It says, as every man had need. So if you sell all your possessions, you're still going to need some things. You see what I'm saying? But they're selling the things that they don't need to give to those who may need it. You see what I'm saying? That That's, that's what they're doing here. So ain't nobody sitting here saying, hey, you got to sell your house. You got to sell everything that you got so that you can be a bum and come ask somebody else for some. No. Sell the things that you don't need and give to those who need it. All right? That's the point. And we'll read that in Acts 4 as well about how they made distribution according to need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. You see that right there? So they broke bread every time they got together based upon that last supper. All right, that, that Christ had, that what we call the Last Supper now, uh, that last Passover that they celebrated with it. All right, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Daily, you know what I'm saying? They're doing the work daily. All right, uh, Acts 3. Start with verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. All right, so the ninth hour would be about 3, 3 p.m.? There about, you know, afternoon. It'd be afternoon. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, right? So, so lame from his mother's womb would be like uh, his, his legs are deformed, right? His legs have been deformed from birth. All right. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms, right? Alms is a free will offering. That's what alms means, you know, just a, a donation, essentially. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. You see that right there? So, so Peter lifted him up and then he was able to stand on his feet, which had never worked before, right? It was always deformed. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So you got to imagine, you've never been able to use your legs before. He's skipping in there, right? He's jumping around, right? Probably doing backflips and stuff, all right? Uh, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Right? So all these people just walked past this guy, right? Some of them give him donations. Some of them didn't, right? All of them saw him as they were walking in. They saw that this guy, he was just crippled. Now he's walking around healed. Now he's jumping around praising God. All right? And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man, which was healed, 
held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. They said, how can, how can they perform these miracles? And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? They said, why are you looking at us? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You see that right there? So Peter's quick to bring that back to him every time. Every time he mentioned Jesus, he's like, look, y'all the ones who killed him. Why y'all surprised? We're just following Jesus, right? The son of God. This is God who did this. We didn't do this. Y'all killed Jesus. <laughs> He's always bringing it up. Hey, all praise to the most high, though. They got to know. They got to get convicted. But she denied the holy one and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. They said, look, we seen him. We seen him come back. And his name through faith uh, excuse me, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, right? This is the power of God. This is the power of Christ, right? Because notice what he said. He didn't say, hey, just get up and walk. No, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk, right? Uh, yes, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Right. So, uh, again, still got still got that faith. Right. If, if that man wouldn't have believed that he could get up and walk, that God was giving him the ability to get up and walk, he wouldn't have been able to walk. But since he believed and had faith and it was all done in the name of Christ, hey, he was able to get up and walk. All praise to the most high. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. And now, brethren, I what I what that through ignorance he did it as did also your ruler. He said, look, I, I want to attribute this to ignorance instead of malice. He, that's what he said. I want to believe that y'all did this because you didn't know any better. All right. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. Right. He said, look, I know it's just prophecy. So now it's time for y'all to get right. i I want to believe y'all did it because y'all didn't know no better and that the prophecy must have been fulfilled. It had to be fulfilled. Uh, now it's time to get right, though. Y'all don't have an excuse anymore. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So he said, look, repent for your sins. Convert, meaning change, according to the law. All right? And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Right. So Peter, he's starting to understand it now as far as, hey, look, the kingdom is not for right now. All these things, all this restitution must be done first. All right. All the prophecy got to be fulfilled first before the kingdom can come to pass. All right. But he will send Jesus. The father will send Jesus. All right. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Right? And some people say, people who are either Old Testament Israelites or, you know, uh, people who follow Judaism and reject the Son of God, they'll say, oh, that was Joshua. Moses was talking about Joshua. Yet at the end of Deuteronomy, it tells you specifically that there was never a prophet like Moses again. Not until Christ. All right. So uh, where are we at? Okay. And all things whatsoever he shall say, say unto you. Verse 23. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Right. Exactly. That's what Moses was talking about. He said, look, if you don't listen to Christ, you're going to die. You're going to be destroyed. All right. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days, right? All the prophets spoke about Christ. All the prophets. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. He said, look, y'all are the descendants of that covenant. It's time to come back to God. We, we, went, we went astray. It's time to come back and repent. Unto you first, 
God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Right. So these are people in Jerusalem. Right. He's speaking to the people in Jerusalem. He's like, look, y'all supposed to know better. Y'all supposed to turn away from y'all sins and follow after our king. Right. Follow after the son of God. All right. So turn away from your sins. Verse four. I mean, uh, chapter four, Acts chapter four. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. You see that right there? So the captain, uh, as they spake, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> the priest, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came to them. All right. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. Right. So first of all, the Sadducees, they didn't believe in the resurrection. That was the thing about the Sadducees. They did not believe in the resurrection. All that, as far as they believe, when you die, you die, right? Your, your spirit, you don't have a spirit. There's no, it, you know, you're just flesh. Like, kind of like uh, secular people today, right? Atheists. Sadducees, they still believe in God, but they, you know, believe that God made us as far as, like, he just made us flesh, right? They didn't believe that spirits, that the spirit within a person is, is, is what is alive. They just believe, you know, you die, you die, right? Um... So the Sadducees, they were really, uh, <laughs> really pissed off that they was teaching about the resurrection of Christ. All right. And they laid hands on them, meaning they beat them up. They jumped them. All right. And put them in the hold until the next day. Right. They threw them into prison for it was now eventide. Right. So it, it was the evening. They went in there. We read it. They went in there about 3 p.m. They went in there, you know, in the afternoon. And they were preaching until the evening, until the Sadducees, uh, the captain, uh, the captain of the temple, and the priests came and got them, threw them in jail. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. You see that right there, growing in the thousands. All right. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes, and uh, Annas, Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas. Right. So you had uh, Annas and Caiaphas. I believe Annas was the first one to be like, uh, was, was, that was the first time they had like a dual high priest because it used to be through all, all throughout Israelite history. You had the high priest and when the high priest got too old to do his duties, his son would take over, right? That was the whole thing about the high priest. And you had different instances where, uh, certain other priests who were still of Aaron, but you know, came, uh, and rose to the occasion on, on different instances whenever uh, you know certain lineages of priests were, were rejected. And I'm not necessarily going to get into that, but Annas was the first one who, after his uh, after he could not, he was too old to perform his duties. The people still wanted to keep him in a position. You know, he wanted to keep himself in a position as well. So he was called the high priest, but they brought up Caiaphas to be the uh, you know to be the real high priest to do all the high priest stuff. But Annas was there, you know, in a position of authority to also be there. You know what I mean? So this is the first time in history where they had two high priests, Annas and Caiaphas. All right. And John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priests were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, many in the middle, uh, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, excuse me. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. You see that right there? So he said, look, you see what happened, how the impotent man was healed, right? I'm telling you right now, it's through the power of God through his son, Jesus Christ, all right? Through Jesus of Nazareth, who you killed, Annas and Caiaphas, who y'all had put to death, all right? This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner, all right? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Right? There's no other first and only begotten of the Father, none other than Jesus Christ. All right. 
Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Clearly, they're sitting here, you know, preaching and prophesying, preaching and prophesying and healing people in his name, of course. They, no, I think they've been with Jesus. Yeah. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it, right? Because they saw the works of God. They saw the power that they had. They saw the spiritual power. And it's in Caiaphas, they can't heal people like this, right? They're they supposed to be the high priest. They can't heal people like this. They don't have that power. So they can't dispute it. They can't dispute the power that God has shown, all right? But they still don't want to hear it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. You see that right there? So they said, Look, we can't kill them right here in front of everybody because everybody just saw this miracle being done. Everybody want to hear the word now. As it said, 5,000, right? So we'll just, hey, we'll let them off with a warning, but we'll let them know, don't be doing this again, all right? And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. You see that right there? So he said, look, uh, oh, hold on. Um, mm. it's not right here but there's another scripture that say uh, we ought to obey God rather than men All right, but that, that, that's what they're saying right here they said look y'all think it's right that we listen to y'all more than doing what God has called us to do no no we're going to keep doing what God called us to do all right for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. They said, look, we're only giving y'all what's been given to us. That's why we was able to heal the man, right? Christ came and he gave us this power. So what are we going to do with it? Not things for ourselves, but things for the people. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. You see that right there? So they can't, <laughs> they, they can't punish them. Because the people are already persuaded, right? And they can't punish them because, like, they didn't do nothing wrong. They had to let them go. They were innocent men. How did they break the law in any kind of way? They didn't. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown. You see that right there? So everybody's known this guy from birth to be crippled in the legs, right? 40 years old, over 40. He was over 40 years old. Everybody just saw him out there five minutes ago. Legs that don't work. Now he's running around, jumping, singing, praising God, doing backflips, doing cartwheels, right? Doing all, <laughs> doing all this wonderful stuff, right? But, oh, excuse me, verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them, right? So this is Peter and John specifically, I believe. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hath made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Right. So that's uh, uh, Psalms 2. That's, that, that's Psalms 2. For of a truth against thy holy child, Jesus whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. You see that right there? So he said, look, you had the heathen rage, right? Herod, Pontius Pilate, and the Gentiles. But you also had Israelites coming against God's anointed, coming against God and his Christ. All right? For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. You see that right there? And that's not just the twelve. This is 
you know, all, all the assembly, right? All, all the followers of Christ here, they were all given that spiritual power, all right? And they, they kept preaching the word. They didn't stop preaching because man told them to stop preaching. They kept doing what God had called them to do, all right? Expect the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Right, they all had the same mentality. They said, look, all these possessions that we own, they're not just for us, all right? And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So people like to uh, either hate or love Karl Marx for saying this exact same thing that was written in the Bible two thousand years ago. All right, this is what they were. This is what the apostles of Christ were doing, making distribution according as the people had need. So again, that lets you know that when it says right here, um, um. The possessors of lands or houses, right? That's not saying everybody sold their house and now they're all bums living on the street. That's not that's not what it's talking about. All right. You had some people who were in the truth who were poor, did not have a place to live. Guess what? You can have my summer home. That's what it's going into. All right. Here I have a uh, land over here that I ain't built nothing on yet. Y'all can go build on it. All right. That's what it's going into. Here I have clothes that you know I I, I don't need. Here you can wear these clothes. You see what I'm saying? That's that's what's going to, or it's specifically saying, look, I sold these clothes. Here's the money. Here, we're going to use the money to pay bills. We're going to use the money to get clothes. We're going to use the money to, you know, buy this person a house, whatever the case may be. All right. Whatever the people need. All right. Distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles, or excuse me, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. You see that right there. So he, he had some land invested. But guess what? He said, I'm willing to lose it all for Christ. I'm willing to give it all to whoever needs it. All right? So here we see Barnabas coming into the truth. All right? Barnabas, he, he was, uh, and we'll see later. We'll see later. Uh, in the next few weeks, we'll see how Barnabas goes on a lot of missions with, with Paul. All right. Acts chapter five. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You see that right there? So Ananias and Sapphira thought this was going to be slick. They saw what everybody else was doing. They said, hey, look, well, we, we don't necessarily want to get rid of all our stuff, but we want that glory that everybody else is getting. I see how everybody looking at them. I want to be looked at like that. So let's say they had some uh, land. And they sold it for, uh, that's what it said, land, right? Uh, they sold a possession. It doesn't even say what it was. They sold a possession. Let's say they had some land, right? And they sold it for $50,000, right? And then they bring the money, except they say, okay, no, here's all the money, $40,000. And they kept back $10,000. They could have just said, hey, we want to keep this land. Or, hey, we need this 10,000 to pay for such and such, but here's 40,000. They could have said that, but no. They said, oh no, here's all the money. They lied. Why lie? That's what Peter, why lie about this? It's yours, you could have kept it. Like, who, who cares? But since you lied, you lying to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. You see that right there? So he had, uh, you know, heart attack, whatever you want to call it. He got put to death right there on the monk, right there in a stroke. You know what I'm saying? Like, just fell down dead. All right? And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose and uh, wound him up and carried him out and buried him. Yeah, he said, yeah, they give him proper burial and all that. 
It was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yeah, for so much. So he's like, oh, really? Was that land $40,000? And she said, yeah, it was forty. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Peter's like, what? Why y'all both lying? Why, why y'all, how did y'all come together to, to, you know, try to concoct this plan against the prophets of the Lord? It's not going to work. Against the servants of God, it's not going to work. All right? To tempt the spirit of the Lord. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. So Peter says, look, you're going to drop dead too. God ain't playing with y'all. Trying to lie against the Lord for vain glory. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. She had a stroke too. She had a heart attack too, whatever, whatever it was. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. All right. So yeah, a lot of people say, oh, the God of the Old Testament, he was mean and he would just kill people on the spot. We see the same thing in the New Testament. It depends on what you do and whether God is willing to tolerate it. All right. Don't take God's mercy for granted. All right. Because he won't always be merciful. Just like he wasn't with Ananias and, and Sapphira. He was, he was tired of their lying, tired of their BS. All right. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, durst no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. You see that right there? So the people were all uh, following, were all galvanized, were all convicted in the spirit by what, what the apostles were saying and believing all the miracles that they were doing. All right. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow one of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. So the unclean spirits, that'd be like mental illnesses, all right? But... Yeah, they were bringing the sick. They were bringing the, uh, you know, people with mental illnesses, and they were all healed, all right? They were all healed, everyone. Then the high priest rose up, and all that, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, right? So that lets you know that them Ananias and, uh, no, not Ananias, Annas and Caiaphas were uh, Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. And laid their hands on the apostles, right? So they jumped them again and, and put them in the common prison, right? So th it wasn't just, you know, at the, uh, at the precinct, right? They put them in the jail. They weren't just in the holding cell. Now they actually in, uh, what's the word for that? They're, uh, dang, I forget the word for that. But anyway, they're in the jail, all right? But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison door, opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people, all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. You see that right there? So you see how <laughs> the Lord was dealing very directly with, with these apostles, even more than what you see in like the Old Testament. They're dealing very directly as far as, uh, the Lord, he said, he said, look, nothing's going to stop this gospel from, gospel from going out. And it was very crucial at that time specifically, the, the infancy of the gospel, that it had to go forth. It had to go abroad to Judah first and then to, uh, you know, to Israel. Um, scattered abroad. But anyway, I'll keep, uh, keep going on this. Uh, early in the morning talk, but the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together. And all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors, meaning outside in front of the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within, right? They didn't know how they escaped. And so well, we thought we put them in there, but I mean, they didn't know how they got out. Now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. 
Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. You see that right there? So they had to ask them nicely. Because the people would have turned on them. All right? And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Yet we just read last week in Matthew 26, when they condemned Christ, they said his blood be upon us and upon our children. That's what all the Pharisees, Sadducees compelled the people to say. All right. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Ye ought to, we ought to obey God rather than men. They said, look, we don't care what you say. We care about what God says. And if you're going against what God says, guess what? We're going with God 1,000% of the time. All right? The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. All right. He said, look, God give us the spirit. We got to give people the word. We got to give the people the spirit. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. You see that right there? So that's, that's what, uh, especially these days, especially in this generation, people get hurt. And now they want it, Now they turn into violence. Now they turn into even murder. Right. That's what was going on with uh, with this council here, all right, with the Sadducee council, with the high priest, all that, all right. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, right? So he had his doctorate in the word of God, essentially. Had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. He's like, all right, hey, council, y'all come over here and we'll talk about it, all right? And said to them, ye men of Israel, Take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. Because he knew they were talking about killing them, right? So he said, look, be careful what you do with these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain and all. As many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. Right, so at that time, because since the prophecy in Daniel laid out specifically when the Messiah was showed up, you had a lot of false messiahs like Thutis. Thutis was one of them false messiahs. He was boasting himself to be somebody and he even had some followers. But when he died, he didn't resurrect. Nobody knows about Thutis. If Gamaliel didn't talk about this right here, nobody would know who Thutis is. All right. And brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. And drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. You see that right there? So Judas of Galilee is another example. You don't know who this we don't know who this guy is. Nobody's ever heard of this guy. We wouldn't know about it if Gamaliel hadn't brought it up right here. Alright? But another false messiah. Alright? And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Yet, Jesus of Nazareth, that's the name which changed the world. All right? Even if they give us a false image, that's the name where we get our years from, right? We're in the year of 2024, Anno Domini, right? The year of our Lord, as people say it. And even if the dates aren't necessarily, or even if the years don't necessarily match up with anything, uh, crucial as far as Christ's birth was probably uh, 6 or 7 BC. Uh, Christ's uh, ascension was probably 33 AD. But still, everyone knows about Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, right? Nobody knows about Thutis or Judas or any of them other false messiahs. That's what Gamaliel is trying to tell him here. He's like, look, if this be of men, this is just going to blow, uh, blow over, right? It's just going to, uh, you know, it's going to pass, essentially. If this is of men, it's going to pass. But if it's of God, there's nothing we can do to fight against it anyway. And Gamaliel is giving them wise counsel here. All right? And to him, they agreed. 
And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they said, look, we still can't let them go unpunished because of their hatred. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Right? So they still tell them, stop preaching about Jesus. Stop preaching about Jesus. Even though Gamaliel told them, look, why try to stop them? Why try to stop them at this point? They got thousands of followers. And if it is nothing, then it will become nothing. But if it's of God, you can't try to stop it. Gamaliel is essentially telling them, hey, look, just take a step back and, and let them do what they do. All right. But they still ain't listening. They still, hey, don't teach about Jesus. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. You see that right there? So that's how we should be. Anytime that uh, people want to make you feel ashamed or even get to the point of punishment for what you're doing in the name of Christ, hey, that's a glory. If you're doing everything that God says to do and you're being punished for it, that's a glory. All right. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. You see that right there. So we'll leave it at that. That's the, uh, hey, that's the beginning of, that's the beginning of the gospel, right? Um, that's the beginning of, you know, what Christ called the apostles to do. Because while Christ was still on the scene, all the apostles were still um, young in the truth, right? They still didn't know which way to go. You had, you know, Christ, he was the guy. He was the teacher, the preacher, the disciples, which means students. They were still students. They were not really ready to be teachers yet. Christ sent them out on missions, sure, but they'd always come back to Christ and try to learn, try to, you know, and if anything was too hard for them, they'd come back to Christ. Hey, well, what do we do here? Hey, we couldn't heal this person, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. But now that Christ resurrected and showed them the understanding, given the understanding, given them the power of the Holy Ghost, now it's like 12 plus Christ, right? It's like, obviously they can never reach to his stature, but my point is like, it's the 12 are now in their full effect, essentially. So now, I mean, fruits upon fruits upon fruits, multiplying Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people coming into the truth, man. It's a beautiful thing. It really is.